first off, let me take issue with the title of African American. We're Americans. I am fourth generation Welsh. I or my family do not pretend, nor do we say we are Welsh American. We are Americans. I was not born in Wales. And the blacks that currently reside in the United States of America are not from Africa. Those sorts of terms that society has come to use are divisive in nature. So what are the issues in the minority community in Escambia County? Many are real and many are perceived. And I will tell you that I think most of them are perceived. And here is why. Again, let's go back to the history of our nation and where we currently are today. Not that many years ago, the thought of electing an African-American president would have been unthinkable in the United States of America. And I would remind black Americans that you are a little less than 13% of the entire population of the United States. Less than 13%. Now that's every man, woman, and child in the United States of America of black ancestry. Had every one of those people been voter eligible, only 13% could have voted for President Obama. But President Obama has won two elections as President of the United States. Now what does that mean? That means a whole host of white people and Hispanic people and Asian people and American Indians cast a vote for President Obama. The statistics are that if we're such a racist nation, why do we currently have an African-American president? Why was General Chappie James the first four-star black general? And why was General Colin Powell promoted to Chief of Staff and later to Secretary of State? Why do we currently have an Attorney General, Eric Holder, who is also a black American. So I would tell you statistically, <clears throat> anyone that makes an argument that the United States of America is a racist nation is focusing on specific instances of where we may have had problems with race relations, but it certainly does not paint any organization or any individual or any nation as racist. We have unfortunately in the black community embraced a thug culture, one that aggrandizes, again, foul language, shooting cops, abusing women, and if you don't think those things have an effect on our children, you need to get a grip. Now, the old phrase from a few years ago, it is what it is, is certainly applicable here. Last night we had four black male teenagers attack a 77-year-old white man. Where's the public outrage in that? One of the most gruesome homicides we've had since I've been sheriff of Scandy County occurred about five months ago. Two black males and one black female brutally attacked a white female, beat her to death with a ball peen hammer and a crowbar. Some of the most gruesome photos I have viewed since my time in law enforcement. Where was the public outrage over that? The murder at Pensacola Beach was an armed black male who shot an unarmed white male and then stood over him and shot an extra time in the chest just for good measure, execution style. Where is the outrage in that? You must have equality across the board. We must work the right end of the problem. The right end of the problem, I will tell you as a law enforcement officer, is not to build larger jails. It's not to hire more law enforcement officers. It's to get into our families, in our school systems, and yes, in our churches, and start to bring back the training of character and integrity to our communities. Because we have raised an asocial generation. An asocial generation. Criminologists have predicted this about 10 years ago, and they called it the rise of the super predators. The rise of the super predators. And these, again, was that sociological phenomenon called anomie, where we have people that are untethered. They're not tethered to faith, family, religion, or community. It's about me. It's about me. It's about my personal wants, needs, and desires, to the exclusion of anyone and everything, and most assuredly, institutions. You are seeing that today with the rise of this indiscriminate violence.